Welcome to another InventRight.com TV show. We have inventor-friendly patent attorney on today, Damon. How you doing, man? Doing great, Andrew. Thanks for having me. All right, cool, cool. Hey, so what I want to talk about today is a difference. I know some of you are advanced inventors, but uh, I think we always have some newbies, some intermediate inventors, and uh, people don't know the difference, some of you, the difference between a provisional patent application, or PPA, and a patent. And it, with some of the verbiage and the way it's explained, even some of advanced inventors is like, oh, okay, yeah, I get that now. So I want Damon to talk a little bit about that. What's the difference between a provisional patent and a patent? Well, I, I think that the, maybe I start a little bit sooner than that and, and talk about what are all the terms for, for the regular patent. So the, it's a, the, non, the, the official name is non-provisional patent, but people also refer to it as a utility patent, a general patent, a regular patent. Those are all common terms, and so when we're speaking about patents, in general, you mean non-provisional patent application or provisional patent application. There are only the two. There's design and plan, but we won't talk about that here. So the difference is, is that from, a, from a, an inventor point of view, a provisional patent application or PPA has no formal requirements except for paying the fee and enabling your application. That means you can write it however you like, you can include uh, informal drawings, photographs, um, anything. You can be you can send it in on a napkin if you like, because there's no formal requirements. Now, a non-provisional application has many formal requirements. It's a very structured document that has developed over many many years. So, so for most inventors, that's mostly beyond their ability to generate that kind of a document, you know, in a, in 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 a substantive way. Um, the other thing that's different about them, another thing that's different about them is the provisional patent application never matures into a patent. It's only an application that expires in one year, whereas the non-provisional application can mature into a patent after examination. It's good for 20 years from the date of filing. You can sue on it. There are claims that, you know, that's where all the, the nitty gritty business of intellectual property law lives is in a non-provisional patent application. So a provisional patent application can be written in common English. It's not a patent. It is, uh, as you put it, a, I don't know if you use the exact words, but it's a, it's a placeholder in time. It's like I'm protecting my idea from this date, but if you don't later, I use the word, I use the non-patent attorney word, upgrade. If you don't upgrade it uh, to a non-provisional or utility patent, that it, it doesn't provide you the long-term protection. And, um, is, so is that accurate? Yeah, that's a pretty good accurate way of saying that, Andrew. It's a cheesy way to say upgrade, but it, it, everybody understands it when I say that. Um, so why do, they, why do they say non-provisional? People get really confused on that because there's the provisional patent application, and attorneys always say application. It's not a patent. It's not a patent. Um, and, and I understand why. We say application. That's a key word. Why is that a key word? Well, it's an application because it never matures into anything else. It never goes to a patent. And I had this discussion many, many times with clients, and they, you know, even clients I've had a long time still make that mistake. And it's an easy mistake to make. And I think you they, you make that mistake because from the inventor's point of view, they just write some stuff down and file it, and it goes away. So they're not involved in the process of, of what it takes to get to the next step. So it, it's just a common misperception. When we're talking about uh, patents, so for example, if I said to you a, a sentence like this, um, you don't want to file a non-provisional patent application before you file your provisional patent application because the provisional patent application will allow you a priority date, whereas the non-provisional patent application will allow you a priority date that is later, but it'll be a formalized date. So, I mean, that, that sentence really doesn't mean a lot, but it's very complicated and people's eyes sort of glass over when I start saying provisional patent application and non-provisional patent application. It just gets too confusing. So most people say just say patent application. If you have any doubts or are confused about what we're talking about, then always please feel free to say, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. We understand. I understand that people don't work in this field every day and they're not familiar with the terminology, so I'm happy to explain it. I remember when I was first starting, and I've told this story before on, on your channel, the, my first job as a patent attorney, I sat down to read a patent and I fell asleep. It was so boring, I couldn't stand it. It took me a week before I could get through this application without uh, falling asleep. So it, does, it is tedious and it's, it's dull, and there are parts of it that are just really, you know, it's all about the procedure, but it's important and, and it's critical that you get the procedure right. So David, we're talking about the difference between a PPA and uh, a, a, a provisional patent application and a non-provisional 
Um, where is the connection? How do you connect the two? People get confused on this. So when you write a provisional application, you get a priority date. That's the date of your invention and, and the date of your filing, really, is, is, is what it is. So if you file on this date, a year later you must convert that into a non-provisional application. That's when it happens, the year after you file your provisional patent application. Now you can file it before the year, but you must file it within a year or you lose it. So if you file it a year and a day later, you can no longer claim priority back to that earlier application. Whether that becomes important is during examination. If there's an intervening uh, application there, then if you have an earlier priority date, then you beat that date. You beat that other application that came in between. If you don't have the earlier date, then you lose. And so you may not get the patent rights that you would otherwise be accorded. So when a patent attorney, if you decide to convert to a non-provisional or file a non-provisional, do they then reference the provisional patent application? Yes, yes. At that point, you're, you claim priority to it through an application data sheet. That's how that's handled. Okay, cool, cool. So hopefully you guys understand the difference between a provisional patent application and a patent. We get that question all the time, so I thought we'd address it. And having inventor-friendly attorney Damon Kelly on, I thought he'd be the perfect person to address this. So thank you, Damon. Uh, my pleasure, Andrew. Thanks for having me. All right, I remind everybody to take care, keep inventing, and we'll catch up with you next time. See ya. Hi, this is Stephen Key, and I just want to thank you for watching InventRight TV. We're here to save you time, save you money, and show you how you can bring your products to market through licensing. So please, subscribe down below, click on the button, and tell your friends. Thank you.